so say, you got to say switch. Yeah, but you ain't switching. Yo, Smitty, we're switching. It's about being aware, yeah. Yeah. About being aware yeah. of the situation and what's, what, what you can anticipate happening. And clearly, mm -hmm. the fact that you know he's coming, but to be that open, I don't care about foot speed. You got you to gotta figure out a way to where he's not either going to get the ball or he's not going to get it that open. And he had a tough shot, but that was just, that was horrible yeah, defense. I think, Matt, yeah. to your question, where does he rank? I think I'm a basketball feel guy, even from a young age. I just feel certain guys, uh-oh. Get up on them. When Neek had the basketball, when G. Hill had, they got a chance. To, then there are some guys I'm at home, even when I played in Niles Annals, I'm sitting there going, mm-mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know why I rank him. I think right. mine is yeah. a feel. Yeah. You know, you start mm -hmm. to sit up. He Zeke, gives you, you that know, feel. You start to yeah. sit up. Yeah. I remember yeah. watching you, Zeke. I said, oh, let me sit up a little bit. Then there's some guys, I, yeah, well, <laughs> even though he's a great player, I just don't have that feeling. I remember, I I remember the, the, the Bulls playing the Knicks. At halftime, he was 4 out of 7, so he's 10 out of 12 here, and he's done a great job. Loft comes into Tony. Look out, it's on line. Yeah! Bulls win! Bulls win it! And Scotty got mad because he didn't call it for him. Tony comes out, makes the shot. They ask the Phil at the end of the game, why did you go to Ku Coach instead of going to Pippen? Phil said, I just felt that Tony could make the shot. Just, just yep. what you were saying. In, in that period yep. of time, it yep. wasn't about. That. What, do you remember that? In Chicago. In Chicago. In Chicago. In Chicago. In Chicago. Yep. In yeah. Chicago. I mean, Pippen yep. was mad. He was like, I, I, should, I should get the ball. He said, don't bitch like this. And he didn't, yeah. he didn't come out. Pippen stayed on the yeah. bench. No, he, he said, on the bench. Yeah. He, he said, said on the bench like this. They ran the play, scored. They showed Pippen sitting there like this. Yeah, Ku Coach came out. Yeah. Boom. Won yeah. the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And Phil. Yeah. And Phil was like, I, I just felt that Tony could make the shot. And that's what you're talking about. Hey, that, all that discussion, that was just about the first round. <laughs> Coming up, great clutch moments from the NBA's second round. The reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game, in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court, and Kevin reaches across me and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest said, don't let this so-and-so score anymore tonight. And I looked at Kevin, uh, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. <laughs> Pull-up jumper by Barkley falls with 1.6 seconds remaining. And San Antonio uses their final timeout down by two. What else can Charles Barkley do? Ellie out of the corner for three. In it. Mario Ellie with a three. They get it to Fisher. He scores! Eric oh, Fisher scores! The buzzer. Novitski goes right at Bowen. And the foul. So Novitski to the line with a chance to tie the game. Welcome back, everybody. It's open court clutch here on NBA TV. And we just saw some of the, the greatest clutch shots from the NBA playoffs. Second round, and I'm going right to you because I've seen that dance many, many times in studio, it's even better when you see it after the made shot. Yeah, that's, that's my happy dance. And I was, I was definitely happy after, after yeah. we made that shot. He yeah, was he less was. happy. Well, he was less happy, but they had beat us the year before. So when I made that shot, that, that actually gave us a lift and, and sent us, you know, kind of on our way. Uh, but I was, I was really happy about making that shot. And I remember being in the huddle. The only thing I wanted to do was get to the basket. I said, I'm not going to settle for a shot. And once I got the basketball and they didn't force me left and they let me go right, I was like, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, I got the basketball, I'm going right, you, yep, too you, late. you lost. And we had three guys <laughs> that challenged that shot. Yeah. I mean, it's like when he made that shot, I mean, you could just, all the air just went away. Me, I mean, it's me. like we knew we lost that game. How was your huddle before that? Oh, we knew we was going to win the game. We, we said, look, we just have to get this stop, guy. It was hyped in the huddle. 
you know, because we had played such a great game throughout. Do you, do you remember, if you, are you saying Isaiah push him right, push him left? Because that's we, what I like to hear. No, because actually we thought that Dumars was going to get the shot and he was going to be the decoy. Mm. Didn't work that's out that way. I love that huddle. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work out that way. That was the play, was the play right? For, for you to get the ball and just go for it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. that's what I like, Z, that, in that huddle when mm -hmm. the Joe's going to get it. That's it. That's Wait, that again, confusion. because we say, okay, we just get the ball out of his hands, and Joe Dumas is going to be the one to get the shot, so we just got a challenge. But it didn't work out that way. He got to the ball very quickly, and he just, he, when he I got it, strong. he just took off. <laughs> yeah. You know, when he got the bath, I'm like, oh, oh man, this is yeah. over with. Speaking of great players, and I, I got to ask, Dominique, you and Larry Bird, playoffs, the battle, one of the most clutch mm -hmm. moments. I remember watching it as a kid. got me hyped. I went outside and started shooting outside <laughs> of the playground, yeah. pretending I was both of y'all. But 1988. That had yeah. to be one of the best moments. Conference semifinals. Neek and Bird, the you know, duel. You know, we, we, we should have eliminated, eliminated them in six. And I remember Bird made a prediction at the end of that I game. That he said... Game. I guarantee a win, Atlanta blew the opportunity. And I'm like, hey, I don't know what Bird talking about. Mm -hmm. I, we have a great opportunity. We going in there, we going to kick their butt, we coming to win. It, it, I don't care what he said. If you guys ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't even come to court. Unfortunately, Bird was telling his teammates the same thing in the other locker room. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of set up for that great game. But re I'm going to tell you, and I really believe this, the reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game, in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court, and Kevin reaches across me and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest and said, don't let this so-and-so score any more tonight. And I looked at Kevin, uh, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, hey, let hey, him stay hey, asleep. Sleep, yes. <laughs> you know, and it's like his eyes got this big, and I knew it was on then. <laughs> I said, I knew it was on. And when, when you talk about the clutch shots, he hit 10 clutch shots I was gonna in say, that game. Yeah. You had 47 in that yes. game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those wow. in the fourth quarter. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of a game. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to slow him down. He was so hot that I think one of the shots he hit was a left-handed three. That's when you know a guy mm. is in yeah. the zone. Mm. Yeah. Larry Bird hit more clutch shots, you know, in pressure situations than... Than any place. They told yeah. you about each and every one, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. He would call the spot. Yeah. yeah. You know, but he never called a spot against me. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, that's kind of but, disrespect. Uh, you know what I mean? But you know what I thought was the, the biggest shot in that series, that whole series? Because we had won and we was waiting to play the winner of Atlanta, mm -hmm. Boston. And we was actually rooting for Boston because we, we wanted to play Boston, wanted another rematch, so mm -hmm. forth and so on. And we didn't want to play you guys because y'all were, you know, athletic, big, strong. Y'all had our number. We had mm -hmm. been battling back and forth. I think it was game six at y'all place. Y'all had a chance to close them out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So right. first play of the game, right. Dumars and I on the phone because we watching the game and we taking mm -hmm. notes. We on the phone, the first play of the game, the tip goes to Danny Ainge. He comes up, the first player of the game pulls up and knocks down a three. three. Wow. Bam. And that set the tone. Yeah, they yeah. beat y'all game six in Atlanta. At the Omni. And I Joe there. and I watched the whole game. By two. And they beat us by two in that Yeah, game. we watched the whole game. We taking notes. We writing stuff down. After, after y'all lost game six, Joe and I hung up. We said, all right, we playing Boston. Because they ain't going to win in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good you know what? Can, 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 can I, you know what's interesting is how both sides look at it years later. You think about Derek Fisher in 2004, uh, and that was a huge part of the Lakers' championship years. But for all their success, the folks in San Antonio think .4... Oof. And remember that pain like it yeah. was yesterday. And I don't know if that falls under the category of clutch or more or quirkiness. Obviously, he hit the shot. But you look at it from the other side, and so often the teams and their fans who have lost that game think back point four. Oh, mm. oh, the worst. <laughs> they get it to Fisher. He scores! Oh, Derek good. Fisher scores at the buzzer. It'll have to be reviewed. They'll review it. They'll review it. The Lakers are going to run to the dressing room and they'll try to get on the plane before the officials can get over to the scorer's table. When you're in that moment, both huddles are trying to figure out, 
Offensively, are we going to execute? Who's getting the ball? Go to the second option, go to the third option. Then you're on defense, you're like, I got him. Are we going to switch? No, don't switch. Let's go baseline. It's so much confusion, and we, we call it organized chaos. Yeah. Who is going to figure out through all this chaos who's going to get the ball, but more importantly, who's going to finish it? And I think that's the most exciting part to you. Point four, you shouldn't get a yeah. shot off. Derek Fisher gets a shot off. Wait, in the huddle, after the huddle. Yeah. <laughs> and walking out, and you're walking out, and you're walking out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Secondary Coach, huddle. Coach mm -hmm. called to play in the huddle. We we walking out. Right? Grant, that, that. I don't believe uh, that. Grant, you, you're not going to be open right there. You're going to have to pop <laughs> yeah, the yeah, corner. Yes, That's what I'm talking I about. That means how we've been through that, right? Yeah. Hey. Or, or on defense when they say, we switching. Are we switching before the ball comes in? <laughs> or are we switching when the ball's already in? Like, you want to get it all clarified yeah. before yeah. you go out there on the court. Have you ever been in this situation? I know you guys have, and Coach said you're switching everything, and you had that one teammate, you're going, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Coach. I'll get through. Yeah, I'll yeah. Get through the screen. Stay with yours. <laughs> Stay with yours. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a break here on Open Court. Conference finals clutch moments when we come back. The little known secret is they still kind of don't like each other. Look at this, baby. <laughs> Of appearances from the King there in the uh, clutch moments from the conference finals. Back on open court clutch here, and I, I want to start with the Stockton shot from 1997. Uh, he was clutching that game. 15 of his 25 were in the fourth quarter. Uh, but on that particular shot, how clutch and possibly illegal was Carl Malone's screen? Uh, uh, it was really, really close to being illegal, but the ref didn't call it, so it was a, a good play. <laughs> but Zeke and I were talking about it uh, a few nights ago about John Stockton that when you watched him play, he was so unselfish to a fault, in our opinion, because he could score the basketball. But because he liked to pass, Grant, you look at his game, you say, well, he's leading the league, leading the uh, uh, NBA in history in assists, but John Stockton could score the basketball. So when he made clutch shot like that, I wasn't surprised, Zeke. Yeah, we, we were always happy at the end of the game when he would pass the ball because he was, a, he was shooting over 50 from the field. Mm -hmm. He was plus 85 from the line. He wasn't turning the ball over a lot at the end of the games. So <clears throat> he was clutch. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to seduce him to pass. And because he fell into, in my opinion, this whole pass first point guard type of mentality, I think it cost him because if Stockton would have been, if Stockton would have scored more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they would have won more championships. Mm. We saw your, uh, your happy dance earlier in the show. Ten years later, Reggie Miller did sort of a modified Zeke happy dance. 
after a game winner against the Bulls. And, and recently he explained to us just how it was that he got himself open. Well, I knew Ron Harper was guarding me, and I knew that they were going to switch Michael Jordan, who was, I believe, guarding Mark Jackson or someone up top. So when I came up, I knew uh, the switch was going to happen. I needed to get the separation. So I kind of elbowed, nudged, okay, shoved Michael Jordan out of the way to create that separation and go to the pass where Derek was going to lead me. And uh, it was a perfect pass, per perfect execution. And the rest is history. Now I gotta ask you, where was Randy Brown going? He knew. Randy knew. As soon as the ball touched my hands, game time. All right, let's get ready for the next one. Randy knew. Isn't that right, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Reggie was wow. never shy about telling people about it. <laughs> yeah. He shoved. He admits it. He shoved. Is that clutch? Yes. Yes. A timely oh, yeah. shove. Absolutely. Timely yeah. shove, right? Matt, yes. whatever it takes. And just to add to Reggie Miller. There are some guys I've guarded, and I said, well, I don't know what he's going to do. What, it, what was crazy about Reggie to me was he was shooting a jump shot. Right. There was, he was not going to the bucket. He nope. wasn't shooting a layup to know that he was shooting a jump shot. And he didn't have the greatest handles to get open. But to be able to run, shove, grab, fight. Back in the day, we run through the butt, butt, backstop. Yep. He did whatever it took to get open. And you knew he was shooting a jump shot. And the bad part about it was you didn't want to foul him. So you always, a, you always left yourself an inch late because he would pump fake. And most young guys don't do this anymore and jump into you. And kick and his get, foot and, out, too. And kick that foot out. Grab that foot. Now, he know everything about Reggie. Mm -hmm. OK? Now, the little known secret is they still kind of don't like each other. Look at this man. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell the honest wait, wait. truth. Here me Reggie was truth. in the room, one, and I'm in the room, and I say, okay, I'm going to watch this. You know, they, they friendly, hey, how you doing? It? <laughs> but it's still the little, like, <laughs> man, I, I, it, I it, will it, tell you. <laughs> it was such because we battled so much. Yeah. And we never really even had conversation until we got <laughs> no, to you know what, though? We yeah. all yeah. had yeah. But you yeah. know what? Yeah. Never on the court. But Never on the court. We talked on the court. Yeah, yeah, that guys. kind of talking, yeah. <laughs> but we all had guys yes. we didn't like. But the oh, right? most, yeah. no, yeah. no, I wouldn't say I didn't like No, no, but you know what? It's funny. When I first came in the league and I was in the All-Star game my rookie year, and I'm in there, and like Scotty Pippen's there, and Pat Ewan, and all these guys that I'd grown up watching. And Dumars is with me. In the, and he's like, we don't talk to. Like, we, 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 we're the Pistons. We don't, we don't <laughs> fraternize. We don't hang out with these guys on other teams. And so I was like, oh, OK. And I just feel like we all kind of played, obviously, you guys before, but at a time where you weren't close with guys on other teams. Now, no, guys, no. everybody mm -hmm. handshakes before the game. They even get up before the yeah. night before. Well, prime example, Chuck check. Person and I. To this day, probably don't like each other very much. <laughs> you, know? you know, we'll walk by each other. Hey, what's up? And keep going. You know, right. it, the competitive nature of our matchups when right. we play each other. I mean, we fought every game. Right. I'm talking physically. We fought <laughs> because again, they was trying to create an edge. We were trying to create yes. an edge. Now, I want to get to LeBron's game in, in 2007. What's remarkable to me about that, and this is maybe the peak of, of LeBron's athletic prowess back then. But first of all, he carried that team to the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you guys know from watching him over the years, his first instinct is to play make. He wants to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. So for him to score that many, 48, to get his team through, that, that's an amazing thing. It really is because when he was young, was Trill trying to figure out, to your point, he's a facilitator, likes to pass, but he was in attack mode that night. Once he got to around 20, 22, hey, man, somebody will get the ball out of his hands. I don't need to watch no more of this. He's going to the basket. He's making his free throws. He's starting to make threes. So when you're watching that game, that fourth quarter, guys, I'm like, why are they not getting the ball out of his hands? Well, he realized, too, in that situation that he had to score for them to win. Right. They wasn't going to win if no. he didn't score. He right. had to get more offensive-minded for them to get to that. And what was that's kind of my point. It? That's the, the yeah. clutchness of it mm -hmm. to me, is mm -hmm. that he read the game and knew what was required. And what was impressive was that at the time, that Piston team was a great defensive team. Yes. Right. Probably right. the best right. defensive mm -hmm. team in the league during that time. And a young 21-year-old, you know, all of a sudden realizing, OK, I I'm, I'm going to take over. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, he, I mean, he put on a, That might have been one of his best 
performances ever. We'll take a pause when open court continues. Clutch from the NBA Finals. They got a two-on-one in the lane. They kick it, turn around, kick it back out to Paxson. And he said when he saw the ball going out to Paxson, he knew he was going to knock it down. Won't start till it's touched. They'll have to throw it up. Garha, turn around, shot in the air. It's good! Clutch moments from the NBA Finals here on Open Court as we continue on NBA TV. And I want to talk, sort of pair them. Well, first of all, let me, let me begin the segment by saying we've all agreed we're not going to talk about Kenny Smith's shot just because, <laughs> yeah. not well, because it wasn't please. a great shot, I don't not because it, it wasn't a great clutch moment, but mostly because it's Kenny and we all know he doesn't need the ego boost and Matt, or I'm the still, attention. And Matt, I'm still sensitive too. <laughs> well, and, yeah, that's true. So, that's a fair so, point. All right, so let's, let's talk about that's Robert. That's a fair let's point. Let's talk about Robert Ory. In deference to 3D, <laughs> we won't talk about Kenny's shot. I want to pair the, the, the Paxson and Kerr shots together and talk to me a little bit about how clutch it is to be not the primary focus of a play when you're playing with a guy like Michael Jordan, but knowing that the ball could very well end up coming your way and you need to deliver. Well, Michael always told guys like Kerr and Paxson, look, you guys, you shooters. If we pass it, you got to make these shots. So it was a lot of pressure on them to make open shots. So you always have to be ready and prepared. But again, you talk about the trust. That's the trust that they had in each other. And we all love to hate Chicago and, <laughs> and Detroit and Detroit, the bad boys. But that Thank was you. the thing, that those guys <laughs> trusted each other enough that you could pass it to them in clutch situations, they was going to knock down well, the shot. Well, and to that point, guys, you look at Kerr and Paxton, those guys aren't taking 15 and 20 shots a night. That's They're only sort of my six point. or seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So they have to be ready to shoot. We look at the Kyle Corbs of the world. Every night, what you do is stretch the defense. They give spacing for guys like you guys to operate and get to the paint. Because those guys now on the floor, now the, claim, or the lane is clogged up. Now you don't have room to operate. But they also, That's practice, why clutch. They also practice to prepare for those <clears throat> exactly, moments. Right? Exactly. So it, it's not about exactly. volume. It's about being ready. And those guys are always ready to take a big shot. That's well, a different well, mindset, though. Yes. Yeah, so well, I mean, because mm -hmm. when you're that guy, mm -hmm. you, you know during the course of a game, I'm getting 20 shots. You know, I can start off. I can miss you know, my first three or four shots That's right. and still get into a rhythm and a flow. But you mm -hmm. might not touch the ball the entire fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, when it's money time, the ball's in your hands. Mm -hmm. And so, as you say, practicing and preparing for that moment, I don't know how. That's a different mindset. I got a chance to see Steve Kerr, which, I, like you say, pop calling. He hadn't played the entire game that series mm -hmm. against San Antonio and Dallas. To take off your snaps, mm -hmm. even though you warm up and all, to sit there, Z, and then... A kick out and you hit threes. Yeah, yeah. You're not in the Florida game. Yep. You haven't touched it. You haven't got a lot you of shots. Touched it. To me, that's a different type of skill set, which is tough. Even though it's not a lot of pressure on you because you're not the guy, you still haven't warmed up and got a chance to be in the floor of the game. Yeah, it, it definitely. I, I, I would agree with everything you're saying, and, but I would say there's an however. Do you agree or disagree? But there's different levels oh. of clutch when yes. when Hold you out. when you wide open and you got to catch a shot and ain't nobody around. Mm -hmm. I mean, ain't nobody around <laughs> and you catch it and you shooting. Ain't no pressure. Ain't nobody right. flying at you. I mean, that that's different when 
somebody, you know, no, chipping you. your Double leg, chip. Isaiah. holding your hand. Oh, that's no your question. Point. Isaiah, no to your question about it. Your point, in those two examples there were, were Paxson and Kerr hits those shots. That's if they plus. didn't hit those shots, all of it would be on Jordan. Why did Jordan pass, pass the, the ball, ball away? Good call. Yeah. So when you're Good that call. guy, mm. that guy. at the end of the day, mm. if you don't win, then all the blame is going to be on your shoulders. So, so I was with Barkley, and this is how crazy it was. We was talking about this play. It was he, Mike Fratello, and I, and, and several others sitting around, and, and Barkley was talking about how he still dreams about he got doubled, kicked it out to Marley. Marley missed his shot. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they doubled Jordan on that inbounds play. He comes off. He said he left Scotty came off, got the ball out of Jordan's hand. It kicked back to Scotty. Sc he said, Scotty's coming down the lane with a two-on-one. Is he and Horace Grant? Now, I'm just, I'm echoing Barkley. <laughs> Barkley said, well, we knew Scotty wasn't going to shoot it. <laughs> so they threw it to Horace. We knew Horace wasn't going to shoot it. So they got a two-on-one in the lane. They kick it, turn around, kick it back out to Paxson. And he said, when he saw the ball going out to Paxson, he knew he was going to knock it down. Mm. When you talk about making the right basketball play, Barkley made the right basketball play by throwing it out to Marley. Marley missed his. Jordan made the right basketball play. Pippen, Pac uh, Pippen, Horace Grant made the right basketball play. Paxson made the shot. So when you think about Robert Ory, for instance. He was open. Big shot bomb. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you categorize his level of Clutchness, to use I mean, his term. What's, what's interesting about him, and I don't know if there's a guy in the league who's had a career like him, but would, would kind of coast during the regular season. It was like everything he did was mm -hmm. preparing himself for the playoffs. And he had great moments, big moments, big shots. Is that fate tapping him on the shoulder and making him the guy in those, those moments? Well, or is there something I, about I, I, Robert Orr? I, I, no. I think he just likes... I mean, it's, I think he's somebody who you trust in that exactly. situation. I somebody who fake, wants the yeah, shot in yeah. that particular but, situation. But, but it's in multiple teams with Robert Ory. So it's, it's tapping on faith and, and sticking to who you are. Yeah. In Houston, everybody's gone regular season, averaging about eight or nine points, rebounding, a solid defender. But something happens when that lights get brighter and we're all saying the right thing. He's been on the right teams. The ball is moving. And for some reason, he's that guy on what we call swing, swing, other side of the floor, and he's knocked down every well, he, he open played shot. Thing he played with guys thing is, that he, got double right. Yes. Right. That's what I'm yes. saying. Exactly. Yes. So, and yes. give him a lot of credit. I, I, give, him all I, give, credit I give all them guys credit but for hitting them open shots. They played shot. with some guys that do double team. Mm -hmm. Well, he's he hit more open, open shots. shots than most. Uh, for yeah. sure. Open right. shots. He was yeah. one of those guys when he went out to him. I said, that's good. Hold on, hold on. But you look at a guy like Jordan, he made clutch plays after clutch play. It's one guy on we ain't own. talking about that Craig Hodges, when he was playing in Chicago with Jordan, now, they didn't hit him at the end of the game, but them threes that Craig Hodges was knocking down mm -hmm. before before Kerr, mm -hmm. before Paxson, I mean... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one for me, the Vinnie Johnson shot. Yeah. I mean, that hole... Oh, but, but Smitty. They're going to... Uh, Lambeer's yelling. Smitty. Smitty. Yeah. Smitty. yeah. yeah. Tell the story, though, because he ha he's having an MVP finals, and he's rolling. Vinny, Vinny, was, Vinny had the mismatch, and this we was talking about your situation where I would have went to Whitman mm -hmm. instead of going to you in that series. I'm standing out there, I'm hot, and I'm looking over, and I see Jerome Kersey yes. on mm -hmm. Vinny Johnson, right? And I'm like... Vinny is hot as a pistol. I'm having a great series, but Vinny had just made three in a row, brought us back, and Jerome Kersey's guarding Vinny Johnson. I'm like, I know he's got no shot. <laughs> you got to give it up. But the, but the play, Zeke. Hey, yeah. shot ready to shoot that. Ah, but the play, Zeke, shoot that. Zeke, the play was he got him leaning and he shot it this way. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that to his right. day because right. I went out there and tried to practice it. And we used to call yeah, Vinny the who, monster. right? Yes. We used to call him the who. And when he, when he made the shot, we would say he hooed him. He hooed him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next, what we're calling our famous five clutch playoff shots from the last 40 years. He went into the lane, and I'm thinking pass. 
but for him to shoot a roll hook, and if you go back to see, this is closer to the free throw line <laughs> yeah. there than yeah. the, the, the dotted line. That's what we're calling our famous Ooh. five oh. greatest clutch moments from the last 40 years of NBA playoff basketball. For you, what, what, is, what is the greatest clutch moment or shot, however you want to define well, it? Well, I look at that Miami game because basically San Antonio had really brought out the champagne ready to celebrate. A lot of Miami fans the never ropes. saw that shot, yeah. by the way. They left, yes, the, left the building. Yeah. And basically a lot of fans was leaving. And for them, actually Tim Duncan came out of the game. So yeah. you took one of those main rebounders away. Probably wouldn't have happened if he stayed in the game. And to, to miss that shot and kick out to Ray Allen, he had time to gather himself to get behind that line to knock down a shot was incredible. I have to agree. As much as I'm a Magic Johnson fan, still my favorite player of all time, the little running hook, I remember being in my living room excited like, oh, yes, hope one day I can get a shot like that. But to, to Neek's point, we're all standing there, I was standing next to Kevin Cottrell, our researcher. We see the yellow ropes come out. We're like, well, it looked like San Antonio get ready to do it again. When you're watching that play, it's the rebound, and Ray Allen never looks down. That's what's so amazing to me. And just back pedals, feet are perfect. And as a shooter, you lock up and you follow through. The go gooseneck is there. He knocks it down. Everybody goes crazy. And for those Miami Heat fans, I know they're mad trying to get through the window. Let me back in. What happened? Too late. The game's over. I'm, I'm going to go with Jordan. Um... Utah, everybody knows the ball is coming to him. All eyes are on him. He's got to get a shot. Somehow he maneuvers, gets his man off balance. Was that a foul? It, 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 but, don't but, call fouls in it. Oh, right, right. It, it, right. it, was, it, was, it was don't call fouls in those moments. It was, it was the Reggie Miller push off. Yeah, okay, 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 he just okay. had the ball. But, even though he got open, and right. that's, that's what I mean by clutch and pressure, mm -hmm. because everybody knows it's coming to him. You got to make it. You got to get open. He finds a way to get open, right? And now he's standing at the foul line after, you know, a historic career. You standing at the foul line, and you knock that shot down, and he captures the moment after he makes the shot. I think he understood the moment. The Utah fans in the building understood the moment, and it was just one of those priceless moments in sport where when he stood there and just held the gooseneck, he held it the up. ball was in the <laughs> hole, and it was, it was like... It was like Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston saying, yeah. get up, get up. <laughs> Not only that, it, it was great. Think it of the great. context of, of that play. What had happened in the last couple of trips down the floor, he had scored a bucket on a drive. He had stripped Carl Malone mm -hmm. on the previous defensive possession, and that turned out to be his final shot as a Chicago Bull to win an NBA Finals. And I say if Stockton did not throw it to Malone and the ball would have stayed in Stockton's hands, Utah don't lose that game. Hmm. We Red? know who you. Let's stand <laughs> <now>. <laughs> we know again. Oh, man. Man. 
<laughs> He's taking it to about another the level. Guard, isn't he? We know. John Stockton is about the point guard. Man. We got to stay together. We're in the club. <laughs> I'm with you, John. <laughs> well, the competitor in me, I can't give give it to a contemporary of mine. So I got. I can't. It's got to be somebody you didn't play somebody against. I play against, you know. So I, I, I'm gonna say I got to go with that magic shot. Yep. You know, growing up, big fan. Um, of, of, of the Lakers, um, and, and, you know, for him, really somebody who I don't recall really hitting a lot of clutch game-winning shots throughout his career. Great passer, great player, but just I don't remember him, you know, 5-4-3-2-1 hitting right, a shot. Right. But to, to go in the lane against Boston and, and that hook shot over McHale and Parrish, uh, really taking that shot from Kareem and, and incorporating that into his game, uh, I, I thought that was, you know, I mean, here you are in the NBA Finals, hitting a hook shot to win the game against the Celtics. Like, to me, as a fan, um, you know, that, that's something I always remember. As a broadcaster, I, I, Chick Hearn's call, very clutch. One of the best. Uh, very You clutch. know, and I was, yeah. Grant, you stole it from me because that Magic Johnson, because of, like you said, it's the Lakers franchise and the Celtics at the Boston Garden, which you two got a chance to be there. And then yeah, I was at that game. For Magic, the play wasn't for him, and he was dancing and trying to get there, and me being a big Magic Johnson fan. And then to add to what Grant said, he went into the lane, and I'm thinking pass. But for him to shoot a roll hook, and if you go back to see, this is closer to the free throw line <laughs> yeah. than yeah. The, those, the dotted line. Right. And to hit that. And you know what? And keep, we had a bad running. series. Yeah, the, bad the, the year before. Yeah, exactly. this what I want. Let me. And to keep running afterwards. Yeah. Because you know me, I'm always at let, let 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 the whole play go through the happy dance, and then Irvin, steady running. I mean, the, the Magic Johnson hook is, is one of the toughest shots. Yeah. yeah. You can shoot a That's jumper. No question. Yeah. Right. Now. You can yeah. shoot a jumper, but right. go out there and try to make a roll hook. Over, was that Kevin McHale? M mm -hmm. And Paris. And Paris. Paris. Both of yeah. them. Yeah. It's hands down, Magic Johnson shot for me. You know what? That's a great reminder that these all these clutch moments we've been talking about don't happen in a vacuum. There's uh, years or weeks or thousands yeah. of shots mm -hmm. or whatever it is that lead up to those. Uh, this was fun, guys. You know, yes. I would describe your performances great. here as, uh, as clutch, I think. Clutch. Yeah. Nicely ball. done. And Appreciate look who got the ball.